Life. Sustenance. Freedom from hunger and want. These are the blessings that agriculture has bestowed to us for generations. For farmers, agriculture is not just a livelihood, but a way of life. Farmers should be especially blessed and rewarded for their toil. But for several decades now, life has been exceptionally hard for rural communities around the world. Multinational corporations have transformed agriculture to feed not the world, but their growing empires. They forced farmers into dependency on pesticides, many of them among the most hazardous and destructive that the world has ever known. They took seeds and genetic resources away from the hands of farmers and into their control. In collusion with governments and international financial institutions, these agrochemical corporations have raked in billions of dollars in profit. They profit from technologies that are destroying human health, the environment, livelihoods, and cultures on a massive, unprecedented scale. But people have resisted these empires. With the help of groups such as Pesticide Action Network International, the voices of those who have been most affected by agrochemical TNCs are being heard. From rural communities to the global community, dissent and resistance have taken center stage. In behalf of victims and survivors, Pan International requested the Permanent People's Tribunal, or PPT, to hold a session on agrochemical TNC. The of pesticides, technologies such as uh, genetically engineered seeds and crops, but also to share the, the richness of the alternatives to the sustainable agriculture. Pan served the indictment on behalf of the victims and survivors. The PPT is an international people's tribunal that started in 1979. It gathers eminent jurors from around the world to try human rights violations. Though it uses the rigorous court format, it is no ordinary court. It gives priority to people who have been ignored or marginalized by existing legal mechanisms that favor the wealthy and powerful. The PPT session on agrochemical TNCs was held last December 3 to 6, 2011 in Bangalore, India. Significantly, India is the country where thousands of people were killed in the world's worst chemical tragedy, the Bhopal tragedy. Dow Chemical Company continues to evade accountability for the disaster that took place in 1984. <laughs> Witnesses took the stand to present more than a dozen cases of human rights violations by agrochemical TNCs. Most of the witnesses were victims and survivors, living testimonies to the ruthless nature of agrochemical TNCs. What is your name? Ashwini is a former child laborer in India's cotton fields. They spray pesticides extensively and without protective equipment. Is TNCs selling pesticides to plantations in developing countries are just as liable as plantation owners in violating children's rights.
Malaysian palm oil plantation workers experience the same conditions of work. They are exposed to paraquat, a highly toxic herbicide produced by the Swiss transnational Syngenta. A former plantation worker, Nagama Raman, took courage to testify on paraquat's effects. In one instance in Paraguay, pesticide poisoning led to the death of a child, the 11-year-old Silvino Talavera. Petrona Villasboa told the jury how she lost her son to poisoning by glyphosate, a herbicide produced by the U.S. transnational Monsanto. La verdad que Silvino tenía 11 años y Silvino se va a la escuela quinto grado y él cuando salió, o sea que él se fue a buscar carne y fideo para nuestra comida y de, de regreso eh, el señor Germán Gelenter está eh, venenando a sus ojales, o sea que está provisando en un tractor y derramó encima de mi hijo el veneno rando. Cuando regreso Silvino de nuestra casa, trajiendo la carne y fideo, ¿verdad? Y mi hija Sofía está en la casa y eh, ella preparado, preparó la comida de ese carne y fideo. Y el, el 6 de enero de 2003, eh, el señor Freddy Larte Garlagen venía eh, echando el veneno eh, 15 metros de nuestras casas, ¿verdad? Y había muchos vientos fuertes y et, está totalmente rociado en nuestras casas. Ahí sí que ya no podía, ya no aguantó más porque estamos, quedamos el sin... Seis, el 7 de enero de 2003, era las 7 de la mañana, yo salía de mi casa Conjunto, con, llevaron a mi hijo Silvino y otro es mi hija Sofía. Sofía también está muy mal y llevar hacia hospital, la séptima región de encarnación. Y era lejos, ¿verdad? Porque era la capital de Itapúa. Y llevaron ahí y la una y media por ahí llegamos en la séptima región de encarnación. Y las dos y media. Glyphosate o Roundup is being used extensively on genetically engineered soy in the whole of Latin America. Since the introduction of GE crops in Latin America, farmers' livelihoods have been devastated due to rising pesticides use and the costs of genetically engineered seeds. <laughs> The resistance of farmers, like Celso Barbosa, has unfortunately been met with force. Celso survived when guards of a local subsidiary of Syngenta in Brazil shot at farmers, protesting the illegal field testing of GE crops. Então, a partir dali, uh, nós ocupamos a área. A uma hora da tarde, 
chovia bastante, nós estávamos na guarita. Chega dois carros pequenos e mais um ônibus, com 50 pessoas é, vinculadas à NF. Chegaram já atirando, atirando nos trabalhadores que estavam na guarita, onde defragou vários tiros, abriram o portão, entraram, atiraram a, a Isabel, um tiro no olho dela, que ela perdeu a vista, o movimento do braço, e a bala ficou alojada é, perto do rim dela. Nesse momento, a, o Valmir Mota tem saído pela janela, eu estava lá também, é, quando inicio o tiroteio, saio pela porta, Vou para o meio de uma árvore que tem na área e ali eles defararam vários tiros num veículo nosso, que eu usaria o carro, sete tiros, foi dado. E uma pessoa do lado, que estava no carro, caiu, mas não caiu baleado, porque eles tinham machucado ele. O Valmir Mota volta de volta para socorrer o companheiro e quando ele vai erguer eles, grita e chega, atira queima roupa, um tiro pegando no coração dele. E ele saindo um pouco mais, caindo, e nós acabamos socorrendo ele e mais quatro pessoas que ele foram é, atirados. Singenta is also involved in the harassment of US scientist Tyrone Hayes. Dr. Hayes discovered the disturbing effects of atrazine, one of the world's most widely used herbicides. At the PPT, he testified on how scientific research is systematically being bought and compromised, and how independent scientists suffer for their honesty. I am a professor at the University of California at Berkeley in the United States, and I study the role of pesticides, especially atrazine, as an endocrine disruptor. My work uh, was originally sponsored by the manufacturer, Syngenta, um, and we were commissioned to look at whether or not atrazine was an endocrine disruptor or caused hormone imbalances in amphibians. Very briefly, we found that atrazine has adverse effects on the reproductive development of frogs. So uh, males are typically chemically castrated. They are unable to make sperm or to show male behaviors. And in many cases, male frogs are completely feminized and can become either hermaphrodites or completely convert into functional females. Since that time, uh, being sponsored by Novartis and then Syngenta, they became very unhappy with my work because it was a, this is a major product, a major money maker for the, for the manufacturer. So I was, uh, there were attempts were made to buy my data, there were attempts were made to discredit me by hiring other scientists. They've gone to the scientific journals where I published my work and try to harass the journals into retracting my papers or, or to cause them to um, release my, my data. They've also gone to my university and asked the university to tell me to stop giving talks about atrazine. They've asked the university to cut my funding or to cut my laboratory space. And probably the most egregious, at least one individual, has actually followed me to many venues where I speak and threatened me very openly threatened me with physical violence, my family, my laboratory. I traveled over 10,000 miles here to speak. And the one thing I want to remember is this. I would like for you to bring all of this problem, these problems up in the light of the world to see. Meanwhile, American farmers like David Runyon are victims of harassment by Monsanto. David's crops were contaminated with Monsanto's genetically engineered seeds. However, instead of being given redress, he was accused by the company of infringing its intellectual property rights. These investigators came to my home and they did not identify themselves as being Monsanto or um, investigators or subcontracted by them. Uh, they were requesting information from me and I did not give them any information. And then it was like four months later, I received a letter from their uh, attorney out of St. Louis from Monsanto demanding seven days for my business records. I refused at the first and I contacted an attorney. So we turned over all of my records, well, almost all of my records. And then hopefully that would stop the investigation. Well, it did not. 
All it did was fueled it because they then had more questions because I had purchased extra herbicides and had those stockpiled for the following year. We sent those photographs in that showed that I had them and they were still sealed, but that still wasn't good enough. And finally, in February of 2005, they sent a letter to me stating that they had an agreement with the Indiana Department of Agriculture to come and search my property. And the first bell that went up was, we did not have an Indiana Department of Agriculture, and I knew that. And so the question was, when we sent it to Monsanto, was that we wanted to see a copy of that agreement. And Monsanto never replied. You cannot tell GMO seeds from conventional seeds when they get out. Everything has to be tested. The production and promotion of GE crops have violated farmers' rights to livelihood, seeds, and a safe environment. Uh, the thing of it is, is that you always live in fear because you don't know if someone's going to turn you in, they're going to come out and, and do another investigation on you. I mean, it's so easy. It's a faceless company, and farmers are always used to dealing someone face to face. And yet, Monsanto is a faceless company. Is Monsanto in China, in Sichuan province? In Sichuan, they used so many pesticides, and they weren't really dealing with anything. There have been no bees in Sichuan now for 25 years. Blamed for the death of bees are the top-selling pesticides of the German transnational Bayer. Bayer's imidacloprid and clothianidin are also known as neonicotinoid pesticides. Uh, these are brain poisons. They attack brains of bees and insects, butterflies, bumblebees, and other animals, including us. Bees are, if they're exposed to it, which they, they go to visit the flower, they take the nectar from the flower, they take the pollen from the flower, and if the nectar and pollen is contaminated with neonicotinoids, they either die immediately within a few minutes. To give you a, a sense of the scale of the disaster, America has lost four million bee colonies, it's four million beehives, in just four years. France lost a million in ten years. But France banned these chemicals in 2000, and they've never lifted the ban. Um, Argentina lost 1.6 million colonies in 2008, and fell from being the number one honey producer in the world to much, much lower. Why do these matter? We've been talking mainly about the terrible human stories, and I understand why those, those are by far the most important things we've been discussing during this tribunal. But bees produce 30% of all the world's food. If you go out into that garden out there, you can watch it happening right in front of your eyes. Bees are pollinating those flowers out there. My personal experience as a beekeeper is that I started keeping bees in 1994. I started with about four hives and I gradually built up in the next few years to, I always have about 10. And from 1994 to about 2005, I would regularly get 40 pounds of honey from every hive. And then about 2005, it began to fall off and uh, we started to have problems. The queens wouldn't uh, survive. The qu a queen should live for three years. Certainly two years was average. But now we find we can't make queens survive more than one year. Uh, and in fact, many queens don't survive six months. And this is happening all over the British Isles. People are reporting this. And I'm, we are convinced it's because of neonicotinoids. Indeed, the PPT was a remarkable gathering. Witnesses from all over the world came to achieve justice not just for themselves, but for all victims whose voices continue to be unheard. The verdict of the tribunal vindicated the people. A strong showing and a substantial evidence suggesting prima facie evidence that Agri-Business and Agro-Chemical Transnational Corporation are responsible for gross, widespread and systematic violations <laughs> to health and life, economic, social and cultural rights, as well as civil and political rights, and women's society rights. further points that systematic acts of predatory corporate, corporate governments has caused unavoidable catastrophic risks, increasing the prospect of extinction of biodiversity and especially 
species, extinction of species whose continued existence is necessary for reproduction of human life. These states, these three states, uh, where six corporations are registered temple, have failed to adequately regulate, monitor, and discipline them by acts of national law. Agrochemical TNC's Monsanto, Syngenta, Bayer, DuPont, Dow Chemical, and BASF were found guilty of various human rights violations. So were governments and international institutions that aided and abetted the crimes of these corporations. For example, recommend, recommend for national governments to prosecute the agrochemical companies in terms of um, and to take action to restructure international law so as to make the agrochemical corporations accountable for their activity and products. Also, to accept a less heavy burden of proof on the victims and to fully commit to and legislate for the precautionary principle. We are trying to lay out what we feel is a way forward. But also it means like whatever we uh, want to want governments to address, it will need to be civil society, which will need to take it there. And that is an international level, because it's not just in one country, it, it, because the impacts are, are wide. And I think if that is a concerted effort and there is as much support in that as there was in bringing the evidence together, I think that is really a way where uh, a difference can be made. Today's decision on the agrochemical transnational corporations, particularly the big six, is indeed a very important verdict for the people of the world. It's a very important verdict, particularly for people who are producing food, who are involved in agriculture. Uh, the verdict brings us to this fundamental question that to be human, to remain human, is important, is fundamental, not only for us today, but for continued generations to come. And so there is therefore this call for justice of rights. It's not just claiming of rights, but justice of rights. And that justice of rights must be now at the global level to challenge transnational corporations. People versus agrochemical TNCs. Such is not just a case title, but an ongoing struggle. A struggle that is bound to spread and intensify as people fight for survival and their most basic human rights amid unparalleled corporate greed. Carried on through generations, the struggle is now very much a part of us. It unites us, inspires us, strengthens us and promises us our freedom.